So, 2017 has come and gone, and what a year it's been. It was a weird year. 2017 ended up being one of the best years I've ever had, and one of the worst years I've ever had at the same time. I don't know how that's even possible. In terms of politics and what's going on in the world, it sucked ass. But in terms of movies, 2017 has actually been one of the best years in a long, long time. But it still had its share of shit, and that's what we're gonna do here. Unlike other YouTubers out there, whenever I make a top 10 best of and worst of list at the end of the year, I always do the worst of first. I like to get all the negativity out of the way first so we can move on to the best stuff. So without further ado, here's my top 10 worst movies of 2017. Now, normally, before I get into these lists, I always go over the movie that was a big disappointment. The movie that I was so looking forward to with every year, but came out utterly disappointed and upset by it. But you know what? 2017's disappointment for me was so shitty that it actually ended up on my worst of list. So I'll get to that movie when I get to it. And also, I should point out that I have not seen all the bad movies out there. I haven't seen Unforgettable. I haven't seen Fifty Shades Darker. I haven't seen Bad Mom's Christmas, and I know somebody's gonna ask this, I have not seen Transformers The Last Night, with no intention of seeing it at all. I refuse, for as long as I live, for as long as I can, to watch that movie, because why, why would I? So yeah, if you're wondering if I ever got around to watching Transformers The Last Night, no, I have not. So it's not popping up on this list. Let's start off with number 10, which is probably one of the most unintentionally funny movies I've seen last year, The Bye Bye Man. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to miss making videos where I talk about the Bye Bye Man. <laughs> um, yeah, this was the first movie out the gate the last year, or at least one of the first movies. It's a January horror movie. You know it's dog shit. And what makes this movie so hilarious is, outside of the Bye Bye Man's name, it just doesn't know what it wants to do with the rules it's set up for the Bye Bye Man. Don't say it or don't think it, or else the Bye Bye Man will kill you. And the only way to, like take care of the situation is to kill the people that you've told the Bye Bye Man about and then kill yourself. It's, it's so ridiculous. And some of the stuff that makes me laugh is when our main heroes try to find out more information about the Bye Bye Man. Uh, they go to a library, or at least the main character does. He types into Google the Bye Bye Man, like people are gonna find that in the search history. And then he goes to the librarian after the rules clearly say, don't say it, don't think it, and says to the librarian, have you heard about the Bye Bye Man? And, oh my God, like, the reason I put this at number 10 is because it's shitty, but I enjoyed watching it. I may have said it was boring or dull back then, but I've had a lot of time to think about the Bye Bye Man, and this shit's hilarious. It's one of those movies that if you're drunk and you have nothing better to do with your friends, watch the Bye Bye Man. You'll laugh your ass off. Number nine is the latest installment of a franchise that just really, really needs to die at this point. And this is the first time one of these movies has ever popped up on my list when it comes to thinking of the worst movies of the year, and that's Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> There you go. What I dislike most about this movie is that it's the fifth movie. It's the second movie where the franchise is being directed by somebody else besides Gore Verbinski, and it's the first one that has a different writer altogether, so you'd think there'd be a little more variety, you'd think there'd be a little more change to the franchise, but no, it's the exact same movie as we got several times before. It's an overly complicated plot, there are too many things going on at the same time, pointless side characters that don't need to be part of this adventure. Adventure. And this is the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie where I've actively hated Captain Jack Sparrow. And I never in my life thought I would ever say that because as much as I get tired of Johnny Depp, I still enjoy Jack Sparrow. Not anymore. Sure, it can be entertaining in some points. Yes, the music is still very much Pirates of the Caribbean. But with five movies in and not changing a damn thing, it's just time to let it rest. I don't downright hate this movie, but I'm putting it on my worst of list so you can learn. Make things different about this franchise. Improve upon it. Go a different direction. If you keep doing the same shit, you're just gonna get the exact same mediocre results. Number eight is a movie where a couple times I had to stop myself and ask, 
Why did I go out of my way to see this movie? Why did I see this in the theaters? That would be Daddy's Home 2. I saw this movie about two, maybe three weeks after it had come out. I had no intention to watch this because I never saw the first one, which I heard was terrible. And I saw this one and yeah, this one's terrible as well. The jokes never hit. Will Ferrell is just becoming obnoxious with these comedies that he leads. It goes down a horrible road of predictability where you can guess every joke that's gonna happen. And you know a movie is incredibly shitty when two things happen. A, the guy who's supposed to be like the big bully is the guy you actually side with. And B, you put in a live action dance number at the end. The movie ends with a big dance number for no reason at all. I hate that shit when it comes to animated movies, and seeing it in live action is just so much worse, so... Yeah, ugh. Yeah, Daddy's Home too. I could not stand this movie. There was just several points where I was just curled up in my seat wanting to get out. I hated it that much. Number seven is a movie that can be summed up with the simple phrase, What the fuck? Fuck. And that would be the Book of Henry. I had to actually delay doing this video and my 2017 movie catch-up video just to see this movie. And I had to think long and hard where this would end up on the list because I knew it was going to end up on the worst of list, but where exactly? And I feel comfortable putting it at number seven, despite that the first half is actually pretty good. The second half takes a complete 180 where it ruins that first half and feels like a totally different and asininely stupid movie. Asininely is not a word, but we're moving on. Because at least with Bye Bye Man, I got some unintentional laughs. And then with Pirates of the Caribbean and Daddy's Home 2, I was just bored through a majority of them. They were very predictable, so I was like, oh, well, yeah, these are bad, but... I kind of expected them to be bad. That second half in the book of Henry takes you completely off guard and you just really don't know how to respond. So again, I put it at number seven because of that second half that comes out of nowhere, but also it's that kind of movie that you just kind of have to see to believe. It's not one of those so bad it's good movies. There's a difference between so bad it's good, like the Bye Bye Man, and then the book of Henry and another movie that I'll be talking about later on is an example of a movie that's so bad you have to see it to believe it. So, Book of Henry's at number seven. Number six is one of the most uninspired, unnecessary remakes or sequels. I'm not quite sure what this is categorized at. I'm gonna say it's a remake. Flatliners. This and another movie I'm going to be talking about soon really proves that Sony is creatively bankrupt. They got no ideas when it comes to making movies. Sure, Jumanji was a surprise hit, but we never expected that to be good. But with Flatliners, I never even heard of the original movie until this one came out. And what I saw with this is a movie full of the dumbest group of med school students I've ever laid eyes upon. It feels like there are no consequences throughout all their actions. The reasons they're doing all these flatlining tests or why they want to really push it all the way are completely dumb and idiotic. There are just so many decisions all around, not just from the main characters, but side characters also that make you go, wait, what? What? And on top of all that, this movie is boring as balls. I had a difficult time staying awake throughout a lot of it. And a little funny thing that I should address when I went to see this movie is right after the feature presentation logo of the movie theater starts, uh, I thought to myself, what company made this movie? I don't know that much about it. And then that Sony logo popped up and I was like, fuck. So... Yeah, this is, this is dull. Don't watch it. It's not worth your time at all. Now, a movie that quite possibly could be worth your time, not in the ways they intended, is Monster Trucks. This is a movie that I had to see for myself just to believe its existence. And in a way, I was kind of disappointed that it wasn't completely god-awful, because it's just very generic. It's an E.T. ripoff. But I also put this at number five because of the story behind this movie. The fact that this started as the idea of a four-year-old who was the son of the president of Paramount at the time, the fact that this movie cost over a hundred $120 million and was supposed to be released in the summer of 2015, the fact that this movie not only lost the studio $115 million before it got released, but it also cost the president of Paramount his job and the jobs of several other people working at the studio, this was such a 
huge disaster that the movie itself might not be too interesting, but the story and the behind the scenes of this is so fascinating. I'm so looking forward to that documentary that comes out because, yeah, it's just one of those other cases that you kind of have to see it to believe it. So Monster Trucks, uh, it's bad, it's terrible, but in its own weird way, it's a fascinating movie. Probably the most fascinating movie of the year. My number four slot goes to Tom Cruise's The Mummy. This movie right here is a prime example of the oversaturation of the cinematic universe concept and when Hollywood has no idea how to even start one. Universal had this whole thing laid out that they were setting up the dark universe. They had all these little easter eggs throughout The Mummy that were going to set up for other movies like Creature from the Black Lagoon, Dracula, yada 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 yada. But you know what? In 2014, Universal tried to start up their own monster cinematic universe with Dracula Untold that movie bombed, so they started again with The Mummy, and you know what? This movie bombed. You don't start off your cinematic universe planting all the seeds ahead of time. Just make the individual movie, because if you plant all these seeds and give your universe a name, and the movie bombs and sucks, then you're, you're trapped. You have nowhere to go. You're dead. You're done for. Even if this movie was not part of a cinematic universe, even as its own thing, it's horrible. The characters are shit. Tom Cruise it just seems so bored throughout the whole movie. The mummy villain, while it's a nice change of pace from the traditional Imhotep or the traditional mummies that we usually get, her character motivation is downright terrible. And on top of all that, it's not scary at all. It's just some generic Tom Cruise action movie with no scares whatsoever. Whatsoever. Even the Brennan Fraser mummy from 1999 had some scary moments to it, and that movie had a more upbeat and lighthearted tone than this movie did. Wow. <sighs> yeah, this was a massive fail, so. <sighs> Moving on. Now, I know some of you out there are thinking, Alexander, you're at your bottom three right now. What could possibly be your biggest disappointment of the year? Was it a movie that's so bad that it's in your bottom three? The answer is yes. My number three worst movie of the year and my biggest disappointment of 2017 was Alien Covenant. I had a lot of time to think about this movie. Even after doing my spoiler review and saying, okay, I like it a little better. I just had to really think about it for a good long time and just realize, no, fuck this movie. Fuck this movie hard. And what really gets me beforehand is I put out my review when I see the movie, when the embargo lifts. I get shredded apart because I'm one of the few guys that reviews the movie and says, yeah, this is terrible. Granted, it was one of my most viewed videos of this year, but regardless, people tore me apart over a movie that they haven't even seen. And once the movie actually came out and people actually saw it, hey, guess what? They share my opinion. This movie is garbage. Yes, it does look beautiful at points. Yes, there are some good acting moments here and there. It has a few cool action scenes here and there, but the characters are downright idiots. There are points where the movie stoops down to a f embarrassing Friday the 13th level of horror. And on top of all that, what makes this movie for me worse than Alien 3 or Alien Resurrection is the fact that this is a prequel to Alien and Aliens. And with this big twist of David creating the Xenomorphs, it completely ruins the mystery of how the Xenomorphs were created. It completely ruins the beginning of Alien with that derelict ship on LV-429. With Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection, you could ignore those movies because they take place after Aliens. But this takes place before Alien. Fuck this movie. I hate, I hate Alien Covenant so much. I've had a lot of time to think about it. Fuck this movie. Okay, moving on. We're down to my last two movies. Uh, my last two worst movies of 2017. And number two is probably the worst animated movie that I've ever seen in my life. The Emoji Movie. The reason I put this uh, above Alien Covenant, uh, despite the fact that Alien Covenant truly pissed me off, is for the fact that I can actually identify a few good moments in Alien Covenant. The Emoji Movie has nothing. But then again, this was an idea doomed 
garbage from the start. A movie about emojis that is nothing but a ripoff of Wreck-It Ralph Inside Out made by the most creatively bankrupt animation company in existence. None of the jokes hit at all. The characters are shit. Well, metaphorically shit. One of them's literal shit. And you have probably the most obnoxious sidekick I've ever seen in my life. This was a movie that made me look at James Corden and go, yeah, I don't like this guy in movies. I don't want to see him in movies ever again. It just has all the tropes that I absolutely hate about animated movies. The goofy, unfunny sidekick. A lot of the pop culture references. In this case, it's all the apps that are within your cell phone. And on top of all that, it has a big dance number at the end. Which... That is always the tipping point for me when it comes to animated movies. Unless the movie actually has a reason for having a dance number at the end, or it's part of the context of the world that the movie is in, like Zootopia, there's no reason for any animated movie to end with a big dance number. So, yeah, screw the Emoji movie. This was the only movie I reviewed where I actually had to drink throughout the review. And yet, despite all that, there's one movie that I saw that was even worse than the Emoji Movie, uh, even worse than Alien Covenant, uh, even worse than The Mummy, uh, and this movie I say is the worst just purely based on a filmmaking standpoint, and that would be The Snowman. I originally had no intention of seeing this movie when I heard the bad reviews, but when I heard the really bad reviews, like the reviews that said you have to see it to believe it, I went to see it just so I could believe it, and holy God, this is, this is a completely inept movie. There were some statements out there, mainly from the director, that said that they weren't allowed to shoot 15% of the script. And given that this movie is a murder mystery, you kind of need to shoot all of the movie in order for us to get the murder mystery. But let me ask this, in the long run, if they were allowed to film the entire movie, would that have changed the fact that Michael Fassbender's name is still Harry Hole? <laughs> Would that change the Val Kilmer scenes? Would that change the villain's motivation? Would that change Rebecca Ferguson's horrible plan that ends up getting her killed in the movie? There are just a lot of things that I watch in this movie, despite that statement that they weren't allowed to shoot 15% of the script, where I go, yeah, but then there's this, 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 and this. It is truly a shitty movie, but it's also a movie that you really have to see to believe. This is one of the most ineptly made films I've ever seen in a long time. And, uh... Yeah, this is something that really deserves a dissection when it comes to looking into a movie, because you just want to ask yourself, how the fuck did this get made? But at the same time, I'm so happy I saw it because it ended up being number one on my worst of list. So yeah, those are my personal top 10 picks for the worst movies of 2017. Got one more video to go in terms of movies from last year, and that's going to be my top 20 best movies of 2017. 2017 was such a great year for movies that I had to pick 20 movies for my best of list instead of the standard 10. So look for that video in the future, and until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below and tell me what your picks are for the worst movies of 2017. What did you think of my picks? Do you agree, disagree? And as always, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.